we are happy to uh, have this uh, book launch in honor of uh, Tom Hurdle's work with uh, GTAP. Let me just say a few words about um, about GTAB, and I'm sure that uh, the other speakers today will will uh, chime in and uh, and amplify uh, what I have to say. Um, so we're approaching now close to the the 30th anniversary of uh, of the start of of the GTAB uh, project. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is clearly one of the most successful academic programs in applied economics. I mean, I, I, I would say it's easily on par with the Penn Wharton database, and it's hard to think of a, another database that has had uh, the, same, uh, the same impact on, on applied economics. Um, it, the explosion of GTAP has been incredible. Uh, the initial database had 15 regions. We're now uh, above 140. 37 economic activities. Uh, some versions are have 76 sectors, if not more. Uh, we've worked a lot on the uh, labor and land use data and continue to do so, um, including, of course, um, uh, incorporating or, or, or working with uh, people in other other domains, especially on land use, working with uh, with climate modelers, crop modelers, et cetera. Um, the GTAP database has had different variations as well. They've looked at, at a wide variety of trade inf instruments. Early on, there was the multi-fiber agreement that is now uh, uh, no longer uh, active, fortunately. Uh, very, uh, uh, voluntary export restraints, uh, uh, trade, uh, the TRQs, the uh, quotas on trade. Uh, we now have an MRIO database as well. Uh, which is beginning to be used uh, more and more. Uh, in the, pretty soon after the beginning of GTAP, uh, GTAP also became the basis for a lot of work, global work on energy emissions and climate change. Uh, and that, that work is being pursued and, and uh, improved over time. That's just on the database itself. There, of course, there was the GTAP model and all the variants of that model, uh, both the uh, both in GEMPAC, GAMS, and other, other variations. Um, in terms of the network, uh, the board, the initial board uh, was composed of four people, as I recall, so um, that, that had a lot of trust in Tom and, uh, and the, uh, the potential for GTAB. We're now at uh, uh, over 30 board members. We just have uh, three new board members in the last few months, so there's still a tremendous interest uh, in uh, board participation uh, around the world. The network as well has exploded with over 20,000 uh, people in uh, the GTAB network. The uh, GTAB has been very influential uh, in policy making, uh, both in, um, uh, in national capitals as well as in international agencies, in trade, migration, climate change, uh, uh, and a whole host of, of other policies. So. Um, all of this is attributable uh, to Tom and his uh, initial initial idea, uh, which he uh, conceived of uh, during a sabbatical in uh, Melbourne. Tom is now on to, uh, I was going to say his second career, but there are probably many others uh, now with his new GlassNet project. And maybe Tom will say a word about uh, his um, views for, for how GlassNet will evolve um, when he gets a chance to speak. Uh, we have a lineup of, of uh, testimonials uh, this morning. Um, so we're gonna start with uh, Peter Dixon in Australia. Uh, Peter wasn't able to join us this morning here in, um, in Purdue, but we'll uh, tape um, a video, which I will, I will be presenting. That will be followed by uh, Kanichi Kawasaki in, um, in Japan. Stephen Karingi uh, from uh, Addis, uh, Bob Koopman in Geneva, and uh, our own Dean David Hummel uh, from Purdue University. And Tom will get a chance to have a few words at, at the end. So without further ado, uh, let me turn on Peter. Hi everyone. I was pleased when Dominic asked me to be part of the editorial team on a fest trip in honor of Tom Hertel. 
I'm even more pleased now that the project has been brought to a successful conclusion and produced a beautiful book with a collection of papers that amply demonstrates the power of CG modeling and the power of the GTAP network. I think it's important to celebrate the heroes of our field for two reasons. First, we want to say thanks to them for their contribution. Second, we want to announce to the world that we have heroes in our field and that we are confident about our field. I sense that this second reason is important in the broader academic community. We are riding high in policy circles, but we are finding it difficult to get the message to our academic colleagues. What we do is of fundamental importance for two reasons. We are quantifying insights from economic science, and we are bringing these insights into economic policy. Following up what I said, when the Festschrift project was launched at the 20th GTAP conference, let me say that it would be wonderful if that committee in Stockholm noticed this beautiful new book and its testament to the work of Tom Hertel. Thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I'm Ken Kawasaki, a professor at the National Graduate Institute for Policy Studies, uh, which is known as GRIPS speaking in Tokyo at around, say, a half past 9 p.m. after dinner. On this occasion, it is my great pleasure to say a few words to thank Tom for his successful achievement founding GTAP. If I remember correctly, it was in April 1997 when I visited West Lafayette and met with Tom and the GTOP friend for the first time. At that moment, I was in the Japanese government and working on the research project of the Economic Committee of the Asia-Pacific Economic Corporation, APEC, using the earlier version of the GTOP database and model, which was to study the economic impact of trade liberalization in APEC after the WTO's Uruguay Land Agreement. Now, the GTAP modeling exercise have widely been well known in the Japanese society as a whole, including the academia, and the estimated economic impact of major trade agreements has been reported by media and discussed in trade policy debate of the government concerning the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP, the Japan-EU Economic Partnership Agreement, the East Asia Regional Economic Partnership Agreement, RCEP, and others. Looking ahead, I think GTAP could play much more important roles under the rising uncertainties in the global trade and economy. Quantitative economic policy studies based on reliable global database and economic model would extremely be useful to clarify the relative significance of international economic policy measures. GTAP could really be a common language for global economic analysis. Let me conclude my few words, once again thanking Tom and celebrating the launch of feature book in honor of Tom. Thank you all for listening. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, so we are here uh, to celebrate the good work uh, of Tom. Um, when one mentions GTAP, the next thought that comes to mind for most of us, uh, including our families, actually, is Tom Hartel. But um, I do not think that uh, when Tom had the idea of GTAP, he envisioned what it has become. And this in itself um, is the mark of a true visionary, the mark of a true leader, giving direction, and then recognizing the diverse talents and inquisitive minds uh, and the ability to build new things around the vision. GTAP 
as we have heard from uh, Dominique, has become an ecosystem that is today at the heart of providing answers to the biggest questions the world is dealing with. What started as an idea to make it cost effective through a public good and robustly address the questions around globalization uh, through trade has become the framework through which the challenges of climate change, inequality, food security, environmental sustainability is now being addressed. I am proud that Tom's intellectual leadership of the center and the consortium itself was welcoming to all. And today we know when global leaders sit on the table as they will be doing during the climate change summit at this week that is being hosted by the United States president. They will be using notes that have been influenced through empirical work that has benefited either directly or indirectly from the digital community. For us in Africa, we are at the, beginning. We are at the start of implementing the largest trade agreement by number of countries after the WTO. And we are implementing this when supply chains are changing and the barriers to trade are likely to be more digital than tariffs. The commitments related to the net zero targets and the associated energy transition pathways all raise important questions for Africa. We are certain that we will answer these questions. The voice of Africa will be heard and this will be possible because of the vision that Tom had. So thank you very much uh, for the way you have led uh, this community. And we are quite proud on behalf of my African colleagues and my own behalf to have been associated with this idea that has become what it is today. Thank you. Um, first, I, I remember um, a quote from the back of your edited volume from 97, Tom, talking about edited volumes um, from Alan Winters, that Tom Hurdle has done for, for CGE or economic modeling, what Henry Ford did for producing automobiles. <laughs> he made it possible and standardized and quality control and rep we could replicate it and all those kinds of things. Um, actually, let's talk with my face. So also, I, mean, I remember when I first met you, Tom, I was running the research unit at the USITC and you had just come back from your sabbatical and had wandered into my office because you were pitching this crazy idea that turned into the GPAP consortium. That was actually when I when I first met, and um, it made sense then. Um, it's clearly made sense since. Um, it's just, yeah, it's been an amazing contribution. Uh, the way it's been set up to sort of recognize the contributions of younger people, and I, that's reflected in the volume of the book as well. It's the people whose careers you've touched over time. Right? You've really helped open a number of people forward who are making important contributions themselves, and we all really recognize that and appreciate that. And um, so just all of us collectively, thanks. Thank you, Joe. And by the way, Joe is director of the World Trade Institute in Bern, Switzerland now, having served in many different roles around the world, but that's uh, an exciting one. Thank you, Joe. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's, it's really a pleasure to, to speak briefly today. Uh, I've worked with uh, Tom here as a faculty colleague for the last 20 years at Purdue. But even before that, um, you know, I had acquaintance with his work because as a as a lowly graduate student uh, working for uh, Bob Stern and Alan Deerwolf on the rival Michigan model uh, as they were building it out and being put in charge of the entire database for the entire world by myself um, and trying to pull all that together in a, in a, in a comparable CGE environment. I know how, how difficult it is uh, and, and how important the consortium approach uh, has been to, to, uh, to the work. Um, the the work that I the, the the paper that I contributed along with my good friend and co-author Russ Hilberry uh, to the to the Fesher volume was really very much focused on the question uh, not just what Tom and GTAP have accomplished but really asking the question what is it that we as a profession are trying to accomplish um, that becomes I think really uh, an especially relevant conversation because the approach here is so different from the way most scholars approach things, at least in the economic sciences, um, that it, it, it's worth uh, really kind of reflecting for a moment on how we do things and whether there's a better way. Um, you know, I think a lot of folks uh, when posing this question, what are we trying to accomplish, 
they'd say, well, we're trying to, to seek a deeper understanding of the economy and maybe a more accurate assessment of how particular policies uh, affect it. But, but really, what's the best way to get there? Is it, is it generating more results or maybe greater, greater repli replicability in our empirical assessments? Um, and, and I think when you, when you start asking that second question, and, and liability that comes to the consortium approach, it, it's really very clear um, the, the, the great advantages of, of the consortium and the work that Tom's created, and, and also very clear why it is uh, that folks in the physical sciences increasingly turn to thinking of GTAP as a complement to the work that they're doing on some of the grand social challenges of the day. Um, you know, I think the, the other thing that, that, that the work really brings forward is the importance of arbitrage across the world. You know, increasingly those big challenges we face really require insights that cross discipline. And, um, and, and, and I think that's, that's, that's something that GCAP has, has provided that few other economic sciences can say they have. But to get there, what you really need is, is, a, is a, an orchestration of a more complex set, set of tasks and organizations. And so one of the things that we tried to do in our FESHER contribution is to provide some simple analytics how thinking about greater uh, specialization in task space uh, could lead to improved uh, outcomes not just for individual researchers, but in terms of social goods, uh, like better research output and more replicable research output. Um, and so you know, one of the things that was so fun for us in, in grappling with Tom's legacy of, uh, in his work was really kind of asking a question that's very important to me now as a dean, what kind of investments should universities and other research institutions be making to push forward in, in fundamental ways? And the idea that it's not always best to invest in individual um, you know, sort of standalone contributions, you know, and, and instead to put investments in things that provide um, social uh, and public goods to the rest of the profession um, is something that I think is really quite novel in economic sciences. Uh, but, but, but Tom's work, I think, shows a course here that I'm hopeful that others will take up uh, because uh, I think it leads to superior outcomes. Uh, even if it's a it's a work in progress to convince everybody else uh, of that idea. So uh, I just want to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to to spend some time reflecting on it, and also uh, to thank Tom for uh, and 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 work as a colleague over the past twenty years. Thanks, David, for those kind, very kind remarks. David is dean of the uh, Craner Business School at um, at Purdue and a colleague there, as he indicated. Thanks to everyone for being here. I see um, on the list of participants so many people I've collaborated with, friends, family. I'm so impressed that they were able to get on WebEx and participate. It's really a special day um, uh, for, for me and for Adriella. Uh, uh, if you haven't met Adriella, uh, my wife is here and thanks to me. Uh, you know, one of the secrets of, to the success of GTAP, um, I think, has been the priority given to award recognition and celebration of those who've contributed to the public good, that's the GTAP network. Yeah, so this idea of, of recognizing people, I think that's so important in the work we do. And um, um, now we celebrate our board, we have recognitions for them, research fellows, database contributors, and now you're recognizing me. Thank you, thank you. I think that is something we forget about, um, how important it is to celebrate one another and their contributions. Um, I really enjoyed reading the edited volume. Um, it finally came in the mail, <laughs> three of them actually. It's a great package. And um, I was struck reading it uh, this last week, how much work was done after the 2017 conference. So this was, <laughs> um, this was a big effort. Um, to both the individuals contributing and, of course, Dominique, Joe, and Peter. Herding cats, as Joe said, pulling it together. It's not easy to pull together a volume where you're kind of always waiting for the last piece to come in. So you have my sympathy and great appreciation. Um, you know, one of the remarkable things about this volume and a celebration is the way it, um, it rationalizes my personal career choices. <laughs> um, at the very outset of GTAP, we were just a couple, one or two years into it, I was approached by a university on the West Coast about moving there. And um, 
So I talked to the department chair a bit about the you know prospects and what I was doing, and conveyed my enthusiasm for GTAP. This, um, as Joe said, kind of a harebrained idea that people didn't fully appreciate. And he he basically responded, "Why would you possibly want to do that? Um, how could that benefit your academic profile, uh, your publications, the kinds of things that actually David and Russ write about in their paper?" So I knew immediately such a move would kill GTAP, and I kind of at that point said, you know, no, I think it's important. I'm going to stick with it. And um, so this celebration kind of validates that choice. Um, and I also realized that Purdue, with its emphasis on service, service to the state, the nation, the world, has been a very special home for GTAP and continues to play that role. I see my department head, Jason Luskan, here, a big supporter of these activities. Um, and um, I'm thankful for all of the leaders we've had, including one of the contributors to this vol uh, volume, Wally Tyner, a good friend, colleague, unfortunately uh, passed away a year and a half ago, but he played a huge role in encouraging me in this work. He shielded GTAP from the many threats which can just derail any such effort when it's getting started in academia. So as, um, as David indicated, chapter two of this volume authored by um, my colleague Russ Hilberry and David Hummels, it goes even further in rationalizing my career choices. Um, they developed this theoretical model, if you haven't had a chance to read the paper, it's um, even if you're not an economist, you kind of get the angle that they're put, pushing, and David shared that in his remarks, but explaining the economics of publishing and career choices in, in economics and in trade, and um, I think they're able to explain, again, in retrospect to me, why these career choices made sense, at least in a social context, and I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I guess, finally, I'd like to say how much this volume, the associated celebration and whatnot, and all of you um, <clears throat> mean to me and to my family. Uh, I think in the um, the foreword to the GTAP book, I mentioned the three children, <laughs> Alexander, the book, <laughs> GTAP, and Sarah, um, coming in that sequence. Um, and um, my wife, Adriella, in particular, has devoted countless hours to hosting members of the GTAP family in our home. I'll never forget the very um, first annual conference, which was held in, on the Purdue campus in 1997. So up to that point, we'd always, we had this tradition of um, inviting out of town visitors to our home, kind of part of the Midwestern charm, you know, you welcomed into the community, into the university, but also to our home. And so we would have a course, people would come to the, have a reception at our home, a board meeting, they'd come to our home. And so we figured, okay, a conference, that's just a little bit bigger, we'll have them over as well, maybe accommodate. So as the, um, People signing up rolled in. We approached a hundred people, <laughs> and um, Adriella started doing the calculations: how much room does one person need in a reception? <laughs> how much can, holding their drink? And <laughs> she realized we had to move all the furniture out. <laughs> so she moved out the furniture, brought in, recruited some friends to bartend at standing bars, and uh, yeah, we had a great time. But. Uh, that's the kind of commitment that uh, she showed, the kind of family commitment uh, uh, that made this uh, a lot of fun to do and um, uh, very memorable. Um, so yeah, in summary, I'd like to thank all of you uh, for who contributed to the volume, working on it in one way or another. Um, it's really a tribute to the strength and commitment of this network and the, um, uh, the great leadership uh, that Dominique is providing and, and others at the board. Um, I'm really proud to be affiliated with GTAP and look forward to it thriving over the next couple of decades. And as Dominique says, I've just embarked on a, a five-year NSF-funded project called GlassNet, and um, GTAP is part of that, but it's aimed at linking networks together. So GTAP's one of these networks. We have a network of ecologists, hydrologists, a bunch of networks in Europe. So GlassNet, we're having uh, featuring GlassNet Week uh, next month, we'll be kicking it off. So it's a, a new venture into the unknown um, and very much with the interdisciplinary focus. Um, so happy to share more of that with you. Um, just send me an email. But um, thank you so much to everyone for being here. It's uh, such an honor to be involved in this event and to um, 
I've worked with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, and thanks to uh, all the contributors uh, to today's events. Uh, thanks to all that uh, have uh, participated. Thanks. Thanks to all. <laughs>